Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this ESP32 dev board in just under 20 minutes. At least that's how fast I was able to do it. Um, I'm gonna do a full walkthrough, but I'm also gonna be trying to speed run it. So don't expect anything too crazy. But anyway, let's get into it. Okay, I'm gonna start the timer when I open the schematic file now. So let's start with adding our ESP32. Not off to a good start. S3 room one is what we're gonna use here. And we're gonna also start by adding a 3v3 net, net label here. That's for 3.3 volts. And let's add a ground one as well on the bottom. Okay. And then let's start by adding our power circuitry. So we're gonna hit add. I'm gonna use the AMS 1117 3.3 volt variant um, with the V in being a five volt net label. So let's add that plus five volts. And our V out being an, a ground net label, similar to the one we have here. So let's drop one on this side. And for this to work, if I pull up the data sheet, we need a 22 microfarad. So let's add that. And this is tantalum. Uh, make sure you got the polarity on that right, plus coming out of the VO. And then uh, we need a 10 microfarad tantalum. Let's add that there. And then both these uh, are, uh, oh, sorry, this is not a ground. This goes to 3.3 volts. Let's fix that. And then our ground pin gets tied here, here, and here. Okay, these are decoupling capacitors um, and then just the ground pin for the AMS itself. Let's move that out of the way. We're gonna do the capacitors for the ESP32 now. So we're gonna need a 22 microfarad capacitor. Um, this does not have to be tantalum, so the polarity does not matter at all. Um, and let's copy and paste some 3.3 um, volt and ground here. Okay. I'm gonna copy this again. And then we're gonna need uh, 100 nanofarads. Snag one of those there. Okay. Let's move that out of the way. And paste out our 3.3 volt and ground. Okay. Um, Let's move this over. Okay, we're gonna need a enable button and a boot button. So those are the, kind of the controls. The enable is a reset. Um, so we're gonna add a resistor. Um, I'll just use a generic resistor here. Uh, call it 10 kilo ohms. And we're gonna double click it and let's make it a 0805 resistor because that is a very common and easy to hand solder kind of package for um, SMD resistors and capacitors and things like that. So we'll tie that to a net label called enable. Put that there and then we will also grab an enable and paste it over here to the enable pin on the ESP32. Then we'll grab one of these beautiful 3.3 volts and a one microfarad capacitor. Let's see here. Okay. And we'll tie that to ground. So this is, uh, this is just circuitry for kind of allowing that enable button to work. So let's put the actual button in there. If we hit add, I'm gonna paste in my, my button here. And then we're gonna use a 100 nanofarad, which is the same as 0.1, so let's grab that. And then we're gonna wire this and wire this. Again, polarity doesn't matter. This is electrolytic. Grab our enable net flag, put that there. And grab our ground net flag and put it on the other side. That completes our enable button. Let's add the boot button. So we're gonna add a net flag. I'm gonna call it boot. Put it right here. Uh, we need a 100, oh, 100 ohm resistor. So again, we'll grab a generic resistor. Whoops. 
drag it over here. I'll rename it to 100 ohms so that we know what it is. Um, change the footprint to 0805. Whoops. Scroll down, 0805 resistor. Okay, got that. And then we need another switch, so I'll copy it and paste it from here. And then we just tie that to ground, and that one is good to go. Okay, so we have our boot enable, um, our decoupling capacitors, and then let's do the USB port. So I'm going to use a USB C um, 2.0 receptacle. So that means uh, we're essentially using the USB C in USB 2.0 mode. So because of that, we only need two. We just need data minus and data plus for it. So let's just make a data plus net flag, and that's going to go on A6 and B6, and then we'll grab another net flag, call it data minus, and we'll put that on the data minus pins, A7 and B7. And then to tell the, the host device that we want five volts, we're gonna need 5.1K resistors. So we're gonna hit add, add a resistor. Change that to 5.1K for the bomb. And we're going to make that 0805 as well. Okay, our 0805, keep it consistent. We'll copy that, paste it over here, wire that together. And then we're going to need a bunch of grounds for this. So these are uh, pull down resistors. So they just get, they just pull CC one and two down to ground with a 5.1K. And then we're going to add some grounds to the ground pin and the shield pin. And the last thing is to add our five volt net flag to VBUS, and that should do it. Okay, and that's, I think, all we need. Let's, oh, no, we need to add our data minus and plus, copy them over, and data minus is gonna go on pin 19, data plus going on pin 20. And then let's add um, a connector. So we're just gonna do eight GPIO pins for this. We'll keep it super simple. Um, for this, I guess, speed run. And then uh, we're gonna tie those to pins 28 through 35. You can see I'm kind of cheating a little bit because I have notes, but it's okay. But I think that completes our schematic. Let's move over to the PCB designer and drop our parts in. Let's move these resistors down. Oops. Move those down. Um, oh, you know what we forgot? forgot to we need to add a footprint for this so let's add a header I was wondering why I wasn't there we'll, we'll use an 8 pin header um, we'll save this go into PCB update and then it should drop one in and it does so let's let's start by wiring up this connector these are data wires so we don't really need to worry about I mean within reason we don't need to worry about how thick they are this will do um, and this is going to be fast and loose because I'm going as fast as I can. So let's kind of start to put our capacitors in for the ESP32 itself. So we got ground and 3.3 volts up here. So our capacitors are going to want to go right here. So let's see what number of capacitors we need to put up there. So we need C3 and C4 up there as our decoupling. So we're going to find C3 and 4. This looks like C3 and C4. The uh, the labels are kind of hidden. And then I believe you're gonna wanna put the smallest value closest. So let's see which one is smaller. So this one's 22 micro, this 100 nano. So 100 nano is a bit smaller. So we're gonna put C4 closer. And then we're just gonna tie those like this. Right here. I like to do them like this. It's probably not the best method, but it's fine. Um, we're gonna add a trace width of point, I don't know, point two five or something. Or uh, let's see. Point 
1.25 should be enough. This is very low power stuff, so it doesn't need to be crazy high. Um, let's do our circuitry for the AMS. So let's go back to the schematic and see C2 and C1 are what we need to put next to that. So we'll grab this. C1 and 2 are, let's see, here's C1. So C1 goes right here. Just drop that there, kind of as close as we can. And C2 is tied to five volts. So we'll, we'll just drop that right next to it. Run the trace there, run the trace there. And then it's good practice to add a, a ground plane for the net, um, kind of a, a copper pour, so we're gonna leave out the grounds for right now. The enable stuff goes up here. So we're gonna start dropping that in. I'm just using these blue rat lines as kind of a guide on how to do this as well keeps it simple. Okay, so this is um, pretty much what we needed for this. So I guess we just need to add C6. Then we'll just add the switch two. Just put that right next to it, I guess. Um, and for that, we need 100 ohm to ground and then to boot. So let's see, R2. Looks like we forgot to tie our boot to anything. So that goes to IO zero. So we'll save here and we'll update our schematic. It looks like that goes over there. So we'll wrap it around. Perfect. And this is not going to be a pretty <laughs> uh, breakout board by any means, um, but it should be, <laughs> should be functional. <laughs> Um, let's move that there. We can wire these together, it doesn't really matter. Um, what were R3 and R4? Oh, those were for the USB. So, looks like we didn't add a footprint for this either. So we'll do this. USB-C receptacle. Let's choose that one for 16 pin, hit save, and move over here and update it. Okay, so it looks like that's all we needed. Let's throw these over here, move this here. Um, we'll put these resistors right next to it, right here. See, this one goes here, and this one goes here. Perfect. And then we might need to change. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this one. Um, data pins for USB are a little bit more important than uh, 
This is not good. I'm going to delete this one as well. And then I'm going to tie this to that. Then for this one, we might need a via. So let's do that. It's okay. Hit, hit space to get a via. And then we go on the bottom layer. And then hit space again to get another via. That should wire it properly. I'm gonna move this around. There we go. Okay. Again, not pretty, but functional. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I think that's, oh, we have one more thing. We have to tie five volts to this. And then guess we can do something a little janky here. Just come under like this. <laughs> oh god. Okay. You know what? We're gonna move this one up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> That'll work. Alright. Um, so now we need to add a board outline. So we're going to do that by going into layers and um, doing edge cuts, I believe. Okay. Let's, I'm go, I usually go into 3D to ensure, yep, okay, that worked. So we'll move this down a little bit if we can. And then move this part up a bit. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a copper area, a filled zone. Um, we'll do, let's see. Fill zone with a uh, ground net here. I'll put it on the front and back. Um, and we just do it again, fast and loose around here. Oops. Guess I canceled it. Front and back copper layer. Okay. Okay. And then. Fill all zones. All right, that works. Now we're just gonna go crazy on some vias. Try to put it next to where the ground connections are um, and between kind of the two planes because there's a top ground plane and a bottom. So I just like to throw them everywhere kind of around where the grounds are connected. And I found that works pretty well. Um, put a couple in here because that's all ground. You can place some randomly as well. Just just make sure they're, I mean, this is like me going as fast as I can. So it's not going to be perfect, but um, this should work. Obviously, this is not going to be good for any sort of RF or anything, um, but it does work. And with that, I believe we have finished our PCB and it looks awful. Um, but it should work. <laughs> so thank you for watching. This has been ESP32 Dev Kit Speedrun, I guess. Maybe I'll call the video that. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. See you later.